Layers to this story are still unfolding, but the fall of FTX and subsequent BlockFi bankruptcy have absolutely rocked the crypto world. But at the end of this video, you'll be shocked to hear the real reason why Andre Jick is behind the BlockFi crash. By now, you know that BlockFi, another large crypto exchange, which was last valued at a whopping $4.8 billion, has filed for bankruptcy. But have you come across the huge, money-grubbing community of YouTube financial influencers that promoted and vouched for these companies without really knowing what they were advocating for? It's now obvious that, after the downfall of these companies, these gurus have cost their audiences millions. Buckle up, because Andre Jig and the rest of these financial influencers have left a trail of destruction in their promotional wake. To put it simply, FTX's collapse paved a smooth path for BlockFi's crash. This becomes clear as BlockFi said that, we do have significant exposure to FTX and associated corporate entities. This explains the domino effect we are seeing as it was no coincidence that BlockFi ended up filing for bankruptcy just 17 days after FTX went bust. And it should come as no surprise that several other crypto exchanges are on the same road to ruin. BlockFi paused withdrawals and limited activity on its platform, as FTX was on the decline, saying it couldn't operate business as usual given the uncertainty about FTX. They also started laying off most of their employees ahead of their Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing. It was almost as if they knew the moment FTX went down, they would go down with it. Back in July, FTX swooped in to help BlockFi stave off bankruptcy by extending a $400 million line of credit. Four months later, it turns out that FTX had just delayed the inevitable, as they are now the cause of BlockFi's bankruptcy. It's crazy how times change. But what's crazier is how financial influencers have a big hand behind the unfathomable loss caused to all those who invested under these crypto exchanges. BlockFi's bankruptcy filing shows that the company's largest disclosed client has a balance of nearly $28 million. Yes, you heard me right, $28 million. How much do you guys want to bet that this client took some information or influence, if not all, from one of these so-called professional financial YouTubers? When you have big influencers like Andre Jink flaunting a new BlockFi credit card, the probability is on the higher end of the spectrum, for sure. Here's what we're talking about. If you're not familiar with BlockFi, it's one of my favorite places to keep my crypto online because they pay me up to 8.6% annual interest compounded monthly, which is crazy. I have never taken on a paid sponsorship on my channel. And don't forget to grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin using this BlockFi link right here. It would really help me out a lot. And even though I'm not contractually obligated to speak positively about that. We didn't touch on this at all, but the thing I'm most excited about for this year is uh, the Bitcoin Rewards credit card, which we're launching in the second. Oh. Following the downfall of all these crypto exchanges, these influencers have been put in an interesting position. Their reputations are totally shot. Every single person who promoted garbage companies like FTX and BlockFi solely for the payday and without doing their due diligence should be ashamed. Andre Jick, Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, Tom Nash, Nas Daily, the list goes on. It's truly embarrassing. These influencers have a responsibility to their fans, and they totally blew it. The number of influencers involved is massive, and it baffles me why people actually listen to YouTubers for financial advice. But unfortunately, that is the case, and it's the reason behind the insane sponsorship deals offered to these YouTubers. It would be impossible to list all the influencers that got bought out by FTX and BlockFi, but let's face the truth. The biggest reason behind the cult of influencers blindly promoting these companies is money. Cold hard cash. I mean, the sponsorship deals were truly absurd. To put this into perspective, some small channels were making half a million per year. Now it's up to our imaginations to figure out the sums being paid to big channels, but it's safe to assume it's in the millions. But there's another side to this. It may seem as if money is the only reason behind all these influencers vouching for these companies with their eyes closed. But unbelievably, some influencers were truly fooled. So many of these quote-unquote financial gurus who were giving their audiences quote-unquote advice totally bought into the people running these crypto firms. Scam Bankman Fried, for example, was portrayed as a very humble and generous billionaire, and people believed it. It's alarming to see how many people truly fell for this good guy Sam character. 
Is it that easy to manipulate and convince people these days? I mean, some of these influencers believed in Sam just because he drives a beat-up car. You trust the guy more when you see the car he drives. He's worth like $20 billion or something. And he drives a to like this kind of, I don't want to call it beat up. It's, it's like a, you know, it's an older Toyota. Not He doesn't even have window tints on a completely stock Toyota. How ridiculous can this get? What on earth does that have to do with anything? Is he seriously saying that someone's Toyota Corolla not having window tints made him believe in their credibility as an investor? This goes to prove my point. It really is that easy to fool people these days. In fact, there was an interview where the CEO of Alameda Research said that she hardly ever uses math at her job. Yeah, absolutely could pull it off without my math degree. <laughs> use very little math. Um, use a lot of like uh, elementary school math. If that doesn't expose their incompetence to the world, then I don't know what does. So, how were these financial gurus fooled? Before we talk about Andre Jick, we need to talk about how this entire situation brings to light an issue with the world of influencers, in that it revolves around a widespread failure to recognize their own lack of expertise. As proven, it's too easy for a charismatic genius, aka Sam, to convince these influencers based on no evidence at all. And now that this has transpired, some of these influencers are coming out and apologizing to their audiences, as they should. But does a mere apology really account for the millions of dollars their audiences have lost? Graham Stephan, the same guy who believed in Sam because of his car not having window tints. It's like a, you know, it's an older Toyota. Not, he doesn't even have window tints on a completely stock Toyota. Made a video 24 hours before FTX's downfall, telling his viewers that he no longer works with FTX and maybe they should pull their money out. He said that he never saw this coming, but doesn't he realize that the damage was done? Or take Tom Nash, who didn't really apologize, but rather tried to defend himself, claiming that none of his viewers signed up for FTX while he promoted them. Yeah, I don't know if I buy that to be honest. This is a big lesson to be learned. Be careful who you take financial advice from. These YouTubers are just entertainers, and they've proven that they really don't know much more than you do. Now, what about Andre Jick? Now that BlockFi has joined the bankruptcy club, Andre Jick, who tirelessly promoted their platforms and spread affiliate links everywhere, and even told his audience that he keeps all his money on BlockFi. I keep most of my money, in fact, all of my crypto with BlockFi, both my Ethereum, my Bitcoin, everything. Let that sink in. In other words, he advertised to all his viewers that it was okay to dump all of their money into BlockFi. Yikes. In a court filing on Monday, BlockFi said it owes money to more than 100,000 creditors, including Andre. Growing up, I've always felt a little… dumb when it comes to investing. RIP to Andre's portfolio. Although it's hard to feel sorry for him, since he's a major reason behind why so many people invested with BlockFi. Just because he issued an apology and took down his BlockFi links doesn't negate the time he spent promoting garbage companies like FTX and BlockFi. Think about it. The amount of viewers that saw his promotions this year is so much larger than the amount who saw his apology on time and were able to pull their money out of BlockFi. Even still, he probably won't stand responsible for the losses his viewers faced, and he's not the only one. Should these YouTubers be held partially responsible for defrauding their viewers? Comment yes or no. Speaking of fraud, check out our video explaining the real reason the FTX fraud was not a mistake like Sam Bankman-Fried claims it to be. 